Have you ever deleted the computer's trash and then suddenly remembered that you've got files in there that you still need? Or maybe the question should be, who hasn't done it? For sure, if you've used an SD card on your video camera, you will have deleted clips and then realised you hadn't backed them up. Too many times for me. In this video, I'll review the software application that has just one purpose, to recover lost or corrupted files, think photos and videos, and in fact, pretty much any other type of file. When I say one purpose, it's actually a little wider than that. It'll recover trash from your desktop or any hard disk drive, recover from an SD card, recover from the Notes app on Mac, recover Gmail and Yahoo, recover from a crashed hard disk, and that's including corrupted disks. And later in the video, I'll show you a successful recovery. For a sample of what it can do, I'm going to show you a video file that's in the trash. I'll empty the trash, and then set any recover on its way to recovering that trashed video. I'll also show you files recovered from a corrupted disk, that wouldn't even mount on my desktop. And it's still able to see 2,000 odd files. But there's one proviso here, and it's a technical one. When files are emptied from the trash, they can be overwritten by the system whenever it requires more space to save new files as you create them. So you need to be aware that files trashed years ago are likely to be pretty well partly overwritten. With that said, recently trashed files on a disk, that's not too full, will almost always be available for any recover to get them back for you. But first I'm going to recover from a video camera's SD card where the videos were deleted in 2019. And let's see what remains. In the Any Recover window, select the SD card and ask it to recover. This is a 32 gigabyte card and it took about 30 minutes to find everything on the card. And that's little time in the scheme of things if you're missing files that you've trashed. Once the scan is complete, you can then select the files to recover. And it's important to wait until the deep scan is fully completed so that all portions of a file can be recovered from different sectors on a disk. It seems that files that show a date and a path are likely to be recoverable. I've selected this 2019 video file and I'll save it to my internal disk now. And here's the video file that was in the empty trash now being played. As an aside, you can double click files and they may show you a preview. In this last case though, it was not able to preview. But as you saw, the file was in fact recoverable. I'll show you a file here that does allow a preview so you can see the effect. I've set any recover to search the trash. And as you can see, even during the quick scan, it's found an untitled photo. I can double click that and it shows me a preview of a screenshot from my iPhone. I can save that to disk and you can see it on the disk. Now let's look at that corrupted one terabyte portable hard disk drive that had crashed. This disk had been sent via the post multiple times with clips delivered to editors in other cities maybe a hundred times or more. And this is the disk named Video Edit Oz. But let's see what we can get off it. Click to select and a quick scan takes place. It shows more files now. I wonder how many of these I can recover in full. And that's over an hour to complete. Not that I'm complaining, as I feel lucky that I'd not thrown the disk out as useless years ago. The number of files grows as the scan progresses, 2,000 odd, as does the gigabyte size of the disk, now 600 odd gigabyte. And you can filter between different types of photos and videos. And you can also search for files if you know the name. So type in SMC and we'll see those. I'll select a few different files here, including this 2012 one.
and the photos recovered, and so did all the video files, and that's except for that 2012 file. Chin up a little bit. The corrupted disk did in fact take a good two hours to recover some of those files. But how much more could have been recovered by a professional data recovery centre? I don't know. And at what cost? And they'd still have issues with files that have been corrupted or overwritten. Finally, I'm going to show you a video file recently trashed on my system. And I'll show you that being recovered from the trash. This is the file to be trashed, Sunset. I'll empty the trash. And before launching any recover, let me explain that the software will search all attached hard disks, whether they're mounted or not. That's why it was able to recover the files on my corrupted disk earlier, the disk that I'd not been able to mount previously. So it's best to unattach all external disks that you don't wish to recover. It'll save a lot of time. Once the attached disk is searched, I'll select the Macintosh HD data and then press Start. It initially does a quick scan and you can filter by today or the last seven days among other options. You may be able to access the file now if it was recently trashed, but be sure to wait for the deep scan to complete after the quick scan is finished. Anyway, I'm going to stop the quick scan as I can see my file here and just take the chance. You can choose from just video files, amongst other types. Under video, I've selected MP4, and there's Sunset. So, tick the checkbox, and press Recover. Select a location to save, and then play the file to see if it's intact. And because I didn't have a crashed computer, thank goodness, I wasn't able to test any recover's ability to create a bootable drive and then boot up a crashed computer, as per the promise in the documentation. Nor did I look at the promise to recover missing data caused by partitioning formatting, reformatting, and a partition being mistakenly deleted. Even so, in consideration of the price, any recover is a solid investment for $60. I'm here to help, so if you need assistance on a specific topic, I offer free support by email for urgent issues that you're confronted with. Click the eye above for a link to my free support site, otherwise let me know in the comments below about topics you struggle with, and I'd be happy to produce a YouTube video to help you solve those issues. And don't forget, I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one internet training. Group and one-on-one -on -one training courses are shown on my website, videoeditors.com.au. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't done so already, please like, subscribe, and press the bell.